1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. We'll be glad you did. I know I was. Come on, come on. JT, the break with Tom Looney. About to get started, started, started. I've noticed a lot of people on Twitter, maybe the people I follow or people who are tweeting me, look really getting sick and tired of Ray Lewis and his preaching. These are the same people. You know, a lot of people went on and, and went crazy after Tebow. Remember the Tebow thing? And Tebow would use the press conference. He'd talk about God. He'd talk about his faith. And some people would be up and arms. Don't do that. Don't use that podium at a football game to talk about your faith. I have no problem with that. I'm all for talking about your faith. I don't think it's I the faith thing no the God thing that's bothering people. I think it's the Tebow. The Mel. And a little narcissistic. He used the word me. Not even I. But the word me in a press conference four times in ten seconds. At one point, I don't What you trying to do? This is JT the Brick with Tom Looney. JT the Brick. Overnights from 10 to 3 on Fox Sports Radio 920. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMA Corner. Your all-access pass to everything MMA. Stop. Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685 4100. That's 685 4100. Time for J Moore Sports. Absolutely. J Moore Sports. Yeah. And he said yes, and he didn't use PEDs. Now, this is what I got to ask you guys. Why ever admit? Why not take that nasty secret to your grave? Why not just lay in your grave, bag of bones, in your nice self-flush post office casket, and they didn't drop you yet? If you don't admit it, you're not going to get dropped. You just put all your money away. It's almost like a lose-lose. It's not a win-win. If you can just hold the line on that lie for the rest of your life, what's the downside except for your own conscience? And if your conscience is okay with it, go to the grave knowing yeah, I cheated. Nobody knows. My grandchildren never have to work again because Nike, Oakley, and Honey Stinger will make sure the checks keep coming in. J Moore Sports. I'm fired up. J Moore Sports. Days at 9 a.m. on Fox Sports Radio 920. Are you ready? Let's rush. Let's that one wobble up. Quentin Rempage Jack. Drops him. This is Frankie the answer, Edgar. Hey, this is Todd Evans. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas, with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. Here with myself, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Bonner, and we have a great week of fight coverage for you, man. In just a few minutes, UFC fighter Clay Guida will be joining us because he's fighting this weekend on the UFC on Fox Prelim card. And also, we have a special treat for all you Muay Thai fans out there. We'll have Scott Kent C. Six fights. And 
you know what? Uh, I know why you thought he stood a chance. Because stylistically, it's a great matchup. In the way it started going, before, of course, he, he put on his bib, got out his fork and knife, and ate a shin, don't, a shin kick to the face, it started off going great. He, he was doing what we thought he would do, is come in and out, you know, paw with the jab, find his way inside, land that jab to the face, land the one-two. He's got a phenomenal one-two. And as you go fighting a southpaw, that cross is going to be a weapon of choice. Nothing better to set it up than that jab. Um, and, and he was doing an awesome job. But he all he forgot to keep his hands next to his temple as he was doing that because, it, you know, he didn't eat just, eat just one kick. He ate two devastating kicks. And uh, um, man, what a night for Vitor, though. Yeah, you saw him set. You saw it. You, you saw him. He just saw Bisping dropping his head constantly. He's like, you saw. It, he's gonna. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Finally did it, and then finished it off in the second. Yeah, you know what's funny though is that is that in the first round of the two fighters, Vitor was doing that first. Vitor standing in the southpaw stance with his right hand forward was every time Bisping came in with that jab, Vitor would pull over to his left, moving right in the direction of that right head kick. And I was expecting, you know, so it's like I wanted Vitor, but I picked Bisping and going to my picks. I was like, I had I wanted to see Bisping win because I picked him. Not because I wanted to, but because I picked him. And so I'm like, Bisping, throw that right head kick, throw that right head kick. And then just after the halfway point of that first round, Bisping starts doing it. He starts pulling to his right every time Vitor's coming in, moving his face right into the line of that kick. And of the two fighters, who was paying attention, who was more seasoned, who who sees the opportunity presented by the other fighter's mistake? Vitor Belfort. Vitor Belfort. <laughs> silence. <laughs> Crickets. Yeah, yeah, silence. No, but I'll tell you what, though. Not, not just that fight. Boy, was I wrong in the in the Gazaga fight. Um, yeah, Armando's celebrating because Ar Armando was right. But you know what, though? I don't think I was wrong. I think Rothwell, his coaches, and his team were wrong. What was he doing coming out as a southpaw? Uh, I'm looking down at his record, and he hasn't really fought any southpaws that would give, that would give, or Gonzaga hasn't fought, that would give uh, Rothwell the idea to come out as a southpaw. And he looked horrible. He wasn't setting anything up. He wasn't moving. He was just kind of flailing. He looked like, remember in Team America when they say, Gary, if you get in trouble, give us the sign. He says, what's the sign? And he starts flailing his arms around. That's what, that's what Rafa was doing. He looked like he was doing his best impression, Keith Jardine. He was, a, I love, he was a marionette, yeah. It, it was it was definitely did not look like he did in his last fight. In, in fact, I, I think Rothwell looked worse than he did in Denver. I'm with you 100%. Yeah, he, he, it was very surprising. And you, you never know what it was. It could have been bad travels. You don't know. It just he did not look. Like the Rothwell that we thought we were going to see. He looked slow. He looked a step behind. And I, I just, I'm like, what was he thinking? He was a southpaw. And especially after the first round, right, Gonzaga found his home for that cross, found that takedown off of it. He was landing successful. Had him rocked a few times. Had him rocked a few times. Second round, Rothwell comes out as an orthodox fighter. I'm like, okay, here we go. Now he shook the cobwebs. And then within two, not even two seconds, he goes back to being a southpaw again. So, Bad pick there. Yeah, yeah. And um, well, what did you think about the uh, Serafian and the Dalloway decision? I, I thought I picked wrong, but once again, judges screwed it up. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you're going to ask me honestly. <laughs> Always these judges. Uh, I'll tell you one thing we were not wrong about, and that was uh, Habib. Oh, yeah, Habib. Yeah, I mean, did he, he made a, a statement the other night in Brazil against Tiago Tavares. Made a statement. What is it with these world-class grapplers turning into knockout artists? I don't know. He, he, he always did. He had good stand-up, but, you know, it's like that Sambo. And, and we, uh, we talked about it on Friday, that amazing shirt that he had the guts to wear. And not only did he have the guts to wear, he got on the scale with an AKA shirt, takes it off, puts on the, if Sambo was easy, it would be called Jiu-Jitsu shirt in Brazil. He's All like, right. are you kidding, man? I stood in line. I'm from I'm from a fallen, broken down Russia. I stood in line for bread and for water four hours. For, they, they got no favela in here has been as hard as the, as Mother Russia. No, he he definitely impressed him. And I don't know if you've heard uh, who he's calling out in there. Cool. And it, the, it's it's a such a fun fight if it happens. He wants Nate Davis. I would love to see it. I, I know you would love to I'd see love it. To see it. <laughs> and you know what though? I don't know how that would. Uh, I don't. I don't know. But I haven't seen. I haven't seen Habib's chin tested enough. I haven't seen him eat enough punches to know how he would do against Nate. And I, I gotta not not disagree with you, but I just can't concur with you that he has great stand up. I think he has unorthodox, awkward stand up. It's awkward. He it's like John Jones. Wild. No, no, no. no John, not style, style John I mean, Jones, you just don't know what you're gonna get. But John Jones is technically proficient. 
you know, Habib kind of, it swings wild. Like, his, his hand will dump, and he'll throw a weird angle, and he'll throw a weird angle. But it's, it's, it's unorthodox to the point of being sloppy. The chin goes up, one hand goes down at the other hand. It's not like, you know, John Jones, when he does something more unorthodox, the, the hand is protecting the open side of his face. That You know, it's, it's proficient in unorthodox. Uh, Habib's kind of reckless with it. And with that being said, you know, he can get clipped. He can get clipped. So I haven't seen his chin tested. Um, I know he's probably got, offensively speaking, the wrestling to put Nate on his back. And if he's not worried about the jiu-jitsu, I think he'd have a, you know, do great there. Obviously, he's not worried about <laughs> the jiu-jitsu. With, shirt, with shirts like that, huh? But no, not at all. And I know we do have a guest coming up in, in a second, so we got to run through the rest of these. <laughs> what, what did you think about the rest of the card? Was there anything that stuck out? And for me, uh, Edson Barbosa getting back on, on track with a win looked great. Right. He, he definitely You know what I really good. liked about that, too, is you saw the glimpses of working with Frank Gendry in his, in his camp. You saw the implement of footwork, being lighter on his toes, working off his jab more efficiently, covering more range with his jab. I, w- I was really impressed with just the little glimpses you got to see. Uh, it, it was a jab that actually knocked out that started left, the end of the fight. Jab, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I was very impressed. He's got to be my favorite striker to watch right now. He's definitely you know, fun to watch. Up, up there, just so f- excellent technique, fluid, light on his toes now, putting punches and kicks together. I, I love watching. I want to see more of it. I'm really mad that we didn't go to the casino and put money on Lance because we all picked him to win, yep. and he, he did exactly what he we was the dog, right? right? Yes, he was. Uh, I'm a little upset with the uh, Alcantara turnout with Dan Mergliata Stop stopping it. the fight because of that. I mean, award for best uh, Oscar for best acting ever, right? Because dude, he was not really seriously. No, no, no. He, he gave a Josh Koscheck like yeah. performance. And Wagner Prado after the event. I'm pretty sure he went home watch UFC one. Oh, that's jujitsu. <laughs> Oh, okay. Jiu-jitsu, Well, joining us on the line right now is UFC featherweight Clay Guida, who's going to be fighting this January 26th, this Saturday night, UFC on Fox. What's going on, Clay? You there? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm walking into a Blackhawks game. Oh. oh, hockey fan. See, I knew Clay's a cool guy. Yeah, so I was going to say, I don't want it to be too loud, so let's try to keep it quick. Just can't, guys. All right, we'll keep it quick. He's going to take on the team featherweight, Jiu-jitsu with Pioki. And your debut, your weight class, what are you expecting from this fight coming up on Saturday? I'm expecting to bring the house down. I'm expecting to get my hands raised at the end of the night. I'm going to come out there and attack him. Like you've never seen anyone come forward before. Yeah, that's, that's what we're expecting. But what was the ultimate reason you chose to drop to featherweight play? Uh, time to see a changing of the guard, man. You know, we've taken... Take it on the best, we beat some of the best, we lost to some of the best in, uh, in, um, in the lightweight division. And uh, it's time to test Southern Waters, man. It was uh, six years of lightweight division, and time to uh, move on to bigger, better things. And how's the weight cut going so far? Not even a weight cut, man. It's been great. Just been dieting, and it's, I'm feeling wonderful, man. I'm sure it's wonderful to be fighting in Chicago. I'm sorry? I'm sure it's wonderful for you to be fighting in Chicago. Can you repeat that? Are you happy to be fighting in Chicago? <laughs> oh, I'm pumped to be back home, man. I haven't fought in Illinois, and I think since I started my career in six or seven years, and it's an honor, and I'm going to make the most of the opportunity. I'm really, really uh, primed and uh, just, yeah, happy to be back. Yeah, I've, I've noticed you haven't, I mean, since I think since you've been in the UFC, you haven't fought in Chicago. Um, what, what's it like going back there? Just with all the accomplishments that you've made so far in your career and go back in front of that crowd again. I, yeah, I, you know what, I honestly, I haven't accomplished that much in my career. I'm starting a new weight class, and the, accomplish, the accomplishments are about to start. Um, I'm not satisfied with my record in the UFC. I'm not satisfied with, the, um, you know, some of my performances. And we got a clean slate, and I'm going to make the best out of the opportunity. Nice. Now, Clay, you talked about your performance in this fight. You said coming in that, you know, you, you want to bring the house down. Do you feel like there's some pressure? Like, you know, you got a lot of flack for the Maynard fight. Now you want to step it up. Because prior to that Maynard fight, you know, you were known as, as the man to deliver nonstop action from bell to bell. You've been in some of the greatest fights in the history of the organization. Do you feel like, you know, after that fight, you need to come out there and remind the fans of who you are? I don't need to go out there and do anything. I just go out there and fight and just have fun, and that's, you guys know, educated media people, educated fans, Dana White, all my fans before the Great Manor fight, whoever my fans are after, realize that any night I go out there, there's a potential fight of the night or fight of the year on the line. 
you know, and, you know, now it's just going to be, I'm going to have more power, 145, so who knows? Don't be surprised to see, you know, my, me come out of the winning end of a knockout of the night or another submission of the night. Um, so there's no pressure. I go out there and have fun. I fight up. Uh, I fight up the competition, and uh, he'll keep a step up in competition, and he's going to feel really lonely out there come Saturday night. Yeah, you know what, I mean, you and, you and Hioki both coming off losses, but, but prior to this loss, Hioki was kind of the, the, the unsung hero of the division. Everyone, you know, he was the guy coming into the UFC that could dethrone Jose Aldo. He was, a lot of people, arguably the, 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 the number one uh, 145er in the world. Taking him on, what are your thoughts on him as opponent, and, and what does a win over him do for you? Oh, you know, my buddy Rick Lamas, you know, kind of already uh... – Wrote the maps for the fight come you know come Saturday he exposed Hioki. Um a win against Hioki, a big one, a finish. You know, gets us not at the top of the division, but definitely gets us, you know, starting us off on a good foot at the featherweight. To the featherweight class. And now uh, that's what we're looking to do. We we asked for a bigger name coming in, you know, even off of two losses. We want guys with momentum even though Yoki lost his last fight. He's still a bigger draw, and um, we're going to put him to the test, man. Yeah, now I'm I'm interested, Clay. You, you talked still there? Yeah, you talked about uh, you know being able to fight in Chicago again. Hello. Uh, I think we lost him. No, no. I can he he can't hear. Us. Hello. Clay, you there? Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, Have he can't night. go Blackhawks. He, he can't hear us. Yeah, that was suspect. Yeah, I don't know. I think you might have accidentally couldn't hear. So you know, I, I used to do this with my mom when she she called and she, I, I'd be in trouble. Like, Black oh, I, game I, was starting. I can't. You. Uh, I got. All right. You know, I know that he's been feeling any pressure coming into this fight. He's got to feel some pressure by coming into this fight. No, you were excited for him. You heard it. You heard what he said. He said the, for all the fans I had before and the fans that I still have after. He knows that he looked that there was some people out there and they made some comments and you know he did lose some fans after that fight. Now. Yes, he is right. He has been in some of the most exciting fights the UFC's ever had. I mean, I think if you look at when they did their UFC Top 100 fights countdown for uh, UFC 100 back then, he was in like three of the top ten. Right. So he's been in some of the most amazing fights. But this is, sadly, it's a sport that what have you done for me lately? And if you're not going out there and you're not putting on a show sometimes, you're going to hear the backlash of it. Justifiably so, though. You don't, you don't, it's not like your, your fans aren't like money you earn and put in a bank account. You got to earn them and you got to keep them. And you keep them by performing. And you, the way you perform in one fight, they expect you to perform the same way in the second. They expect you to keep performing like that. What happened when Anderson Silva, when he decided he to take. back. Yeah, when, when, with Talis Leches and, and, uh, and uh, Damian Maya, when he, when he did perform up to Anderson Silva Park, you know, not only all of his fans were disappointed, but the, the boss, the head honcho himself, was like, hey, I'm not going to stand for this kind of crap. So as a fighter, it's kind of your job to, to deliver. And, 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 you know, when you fail to do so, fans are going to fail to cheer for you. Yeah, and Dana was very vocal about that. You know, in fact, actually, didn't he say that he was going to make Anderson fight on free TV if he had pulled that again? You know, <laughs> Dana was really mad the other day at Dan Murliata. Oh, yeah. Did you see those yeah, things on Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Saying those, those are Mazzagatti-esque quotes. Oh, what, did you hear Mazzagatti is refereeing the Aldo um, Edgar fight? judge who gave um, Melvin Bird, the, no. the, the Adelaide Bird, Adelaide Adelaide Bird. Bird. she's one of the judges. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people were complaining. It's not going to go to the decision anyways. Where's, yeah, think so? where's the accountability? No. How, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, how, do you, how does that not go to a decision? No. He's, it's not. Who do you think wins? I think Aldo wins. I think okay, Aldo's yeah. going to so knock Aldo's going to be the first person to finish Edgar ever? Yes. I, I, I'll tell you this much. What Aldo, what Aldo did to Faber is what we're going to see in this one, I think. I don't know if he'll finish him with it because I think Frankie's just got that guts, you know, go hard. But sty- stylistically speaking, when you've got a guy who moves in and out of the jab, they have that lead leg, they're susceptible to it. And, and you know, just like every punch can counter a kick, every kick can, can be a counter as a, to a punch as well. And stylistically, the way Frankie comes in and out, long on his toes, pawing with that jab, kind of flicking, he's moving and circling every time he's coming into the leg, the range of that, that leg kick. And we saw against the Ben Henderson fight, he doesn't do well defending against leg kicks. And you're going to fight the most devastating leg kicker in the history of the sport right now. 
So you don't think Frankie's going to be able to get inside and take him down at all? No, it's just that Aldo, Jose's takedown defense is so effective and so, so unorthodox and so tricky. I, I, I don't think so at all. And, and I, I've talked to Gray. Gray's actually down there. He, he might be back. He might have got back last night. But Gray Maynard was down there, you know, helping him prep and stuff. And he said, like, uh, Frankie's not – no one's taking Jose down. His, his delay. Well, Gray his, said that about Frankie, too. Frankie's not going to take me down. Frankie didn't. What? Take him down. What? Frankie didn't take Greg down? Well, you mean the one time where he, he, he reversed him, slammed him, and Gray stood back up? Right, he, took him, he took him down a few times. In the second fight? In the both in, in both the fights. Third fight? In the second and the third fight. No, you got to hold someone down to take him down. It, those aren't points in, in college or MMA. Oh, uh, you always play your favorites. No, I, I tell <laughs> like you need to speak to the judges on that. Yeah, yeah. but it's true. It's like, it's like, it's like Diego Sanchez. Well, Diego Sanchez justified the, the the Martin Cameron win. He's like, I got the takedowns. Like, no, you didn't. You almost had a takedown, but Martin got right back up. Yeah, and it the doesn't judges count. gave it to him. I'll give you another one. Saint Pierre, the first fight with with uh, B J Penn. He, he, took, ah, he took that, though. B.J. faded halfway through that second. Either way, he took him down. That's the reason he won. I mean, but he held B.J. down. B.J. didn't get back up. Be that as it may, B.J. Penn was we beating talking, him on what, the ground. What we were talking about <laughs> was that, you know, how do you school? If you take someone down and they get right back up, that's not a takedown. In some people's eyes. That, that, this is where – educated I, people's I, eyes. I, I agree with you. So, listen, no, I, I agree with you, Joey, 100%, that if you're able to control where the fight goes and where it stays – Okay, now if you take somebody down constantly and they're getting right back up, that that's not. I, I don't it's think that wash. should be. I don't think it should be counted. Unfortunately, that's what happened, with, Gray, that's what happened with Gray and Frankie. But, but, he, but you know what? That one slam is so highlight reel. It counts as three slams for me. <laughs> it's so highlight reel. It's three slams. <laughs> it's three slams. <laughs> that was a Chris Benoit like German suplexes. <laughs> yeah, no, you, hey, you, you can't bring the crippler in anything anymore no, no, because no, the league went out. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone else did. But, said but it. anyways, yeah. But, uh, uh, Aldo, Aldo Lake chops, chops, chops Frankie down, man. Yes. We'll see. Uh, Let's see. Pick any, pick any Frankie on this I'm one? Not, I haven't. No, I'm not picking anybody right. yet. It's official then. <laughs> I'm right. It's official. I got it. Damn it, Billy! You just jinxed me. Usually when I you know when I'm focused, I just I say I'm focused. When I'm focused, I say it. You know I'm gonna take a break right now. We can get into the slightly the MMA fight card sponsored by Fish Kids. Top of the three great locations. It rates at 9.95 percent. How can you go wrong? Competitors tell you they're giving you half off, but half off of what? Our man Mike the Chow will not be beat or under Soul Cold Fast Cash's new location at 702-822-4456. Tell him that Billy sent you and receive $50 off your first payment. And I have to tell you that LASIK of Nevada has been an amazing experience I had here in Las Vegas. I recently had the LASIK procedure done to correct my eyes to better than 2020. I don't need glasses anymore. And I'm telling you, it's like a miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible through the whole process and extremely Professional. And I urge anyone out there listening to me right now, if you've thought about doing LASIK, speak to my doctor, Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% off premium LASIK when you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available. Call 702-636-2010. You will be delighted you did. I know I was. We come back. Scott Kent and Tiffany Van Seuss. Don't go anywhere. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. Hi, this is Billy Mir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, I almost forgot. They have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know. It helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. Today, companies know what's good for business is good for the environment, which is why savvy companies are joining the Environmental Protection Agency's Performance Track. Performance Track companies are environmental leaders committed to making big changes in the way they do business for the sake of the environment and their bottom line. If a company qualifies for the Performance Track program, they become part of an elite group of companies who are committed to producing exceptional environmental results at their facilities. Performance Track companies are reducing the 
smart way to protect the environment and green your bottom line. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com. Your all-access pass to everything MMA. Time for J Moore Sports. Joey Vaughn and Heidi Fang, and this segment is brought to you by LASIK of Nevada. 